Hello again, my name is Samantha, and welcome to the first project in the Girls in STEM Java curriculum. In lesson 4, we talked about while loops. Today, we'll be making a game called 21 Sticks, which is an application of that concept. Katie, Bella, and I will be the instructors for today's lesson. First, we'll do a warm-up, and then we'll get right into the project. Let's get started! Today's warm-up asks us to use a while loop to count and print out the values from 5 to a number inputted by the user. If the user doesn't follow the instructions and inputs a number less than 5, we'll print out the number needs to be greater than 5. Try pausing the video here and writing your code. If you get stuck, here are a few hints. You'll need to use if statements, a scanner, and while loops to complete this exercise. When you use a scanner, remember to import it at the top of the file before the main method. When you're using a while loop, remember to increment the counter variable to avoid an infinite loop. We don't want the program to run forever. If you haven't completed the problem yet, try pausing the video here and resume the video when you're ready to go over the answer. Once you've finished, look at the key. The first important thing we have to remember to do is import the scanner. Then, we'll make an instance of it and use it to store the user's inputted value as a variable. Ours is called lastNum, since it's the last number that will be printed out. Additionally, since we're using a while loop in this code instead of a for loop, we have to make a counter variable in advance to control the loop later. Now, we can use an if statement to check whether lastNum is greater than 5 or not. If it is less than 5, the program should print out the number needs to be greater than 5. Otherwise, in an else statement, the program will count from 5 to last num. This is where we can use a while loop. The while loop should be set up so that it checks if the counter variable is less than or equal to last num after each iteration of the loop. Inside the loop, all we have to do is print out the value of count and add 1 to it. Alright, so let's get into the actual project. 21 Sticks is a game where two players take turns taking either one or two sticks from a stack of 21. Eventually, this stack will run out, and whoever takes the last stick loses. This project will use previously learned skills including printing, variables, scanners, if-else statements, and while loops. Since we're taking in user's input constantly throughout the program, we need to imp import scanner and make an instance of it. If you forget how to do this, the code is on the slide. Pause the video here and do so before we move on. Variables are always the number that change and that we need to keep track of. For this project, we need to create variables for this number of sticks left and for the current player. Both should be integers. The number of sticks should initially be set to 21 and the current player should be initially set to 1. Pause the video here and make your variables. Now since we need to continuously subtract sticks from the total number of sticks, we can set up a while loop. With each iteration, it should check that there are still sticks left. Inside the loop, we need to print out how many sticks are left, then say whose turn it is, and ask whether the player would like to take one or two sticks, then subtract that number from the total. Try pausing the video now and setting up this loop. If you haven't already, run your code to make sure there are no compile errors. Your code should look similar to this. So the first thing we need to do each time the loop repeats is tell the players what's going on. Let's print a message that'll say how many sticks are left, whose turn it is, and ask how many sticks the player wants to take. We'll also use a scanner to take in the integer the player inputs. Pause the video now and write your code. Next, we need to make sure that the player either entered the number 1 or 2. Let's write an if statement that checks if this is the case. We are asked to use the OR operator, which is made up of two vertical bars, or absolute value bars, with no space in between them. Pause the video now and write your code. Now we'll code the players taking away the sticks. 
Once each player takes sticks, we need to check if this turn causes the total sticks in the stack to equal zero. We also need to check if they actually took one or two sticks. Here are the things we'll need to do to accomplish this. Inside the if statement, subtract the number the player chose from the total number of sticks. Next, make another if statement that checks if sticks is less than or equal to zero. In the else statement, print that's not how you play, then break out of the loop. This will run if the player did not take either one or two sticks. If you haven't already, run your code. The while loop should look similar to this. Cool, there's one last thing to do. When you ran your code during the check-in, you might have noticed that the program does not switch between players 1 and 2. How can we fix this? Well, after we run the loop once, we can check if the variable player is player 1. If it is, we'll change it to player 2, and if it's not, we'll change it back to player 1. Inside the while loop, make another if-else statement that will do this. Pause the video now and write your code. If you haven't already, run your code. The if-else statement should look similar to this. If you're following along using the actual slides, you can go to the replic key linked on the next slide. If not, you can access the key in the description below. Here is a video of how the game should function. Your code doesn't need to look exactly like ours, but it should work the same way. There's always multiple ways to solve a problem. Thanks for watching! Congrats on completing your first Girls in STEM project. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to reach out to us at our email, ccagirls2code at gmail.com. We'd like to thank the following on the production team for all of the hard work that went into this lesson. All of the slides and videos in this series are available on our website as well as the description below. I hope you'll join us again in our next project.